from the News Channel 5 Network. This is the plus side of Nashville. Hi, everybody. I'm Tawanda Coleman. Welcome to the Plus Side of Nashville. You know, I'm excited to share with you all the many positive things happening in the lives of children, thanks to organizations that we're featuring today. A Soldier's Child Foundation is a nonprofit that's stepping in for those special moments in the life of a child who's lost a parent during active military duty. We'll talk about how the foundation is helping these children both emotionally and financially in just a bit. But we're starting things off on a classical note. How many children or teens do you know that play or listen to classical music? Unfortunately, it's probably not that many, but my first guest hopes that's about to change. Kelly Corcoran is an orchestra conductor and the artistic director of the contemporary music ensemble Intersection, and I welcome you, Kelly, to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, it's my pleasure. So you, many people will recognize your name, will recognize you as having been with the Nashville Symphony for many years. You have a love of classical music, and I'm just curious to know, what is it about classical music that you love? There are so many things. <laughs> um, I mean, first of all, I think classical music, of course, is hundreds of years old, um, but it's alive and well. Composers today are living and writing new music, and it's still going. And so um, the depth of this repertoire is really exciting to me, all the different kinds of music that we can discover. And I think also classical music has this way of exploring our emotions as a human being. Um, you know, we can experience joy and exuberance, um, but, you know, um, maybe sadness or pensiveness or, or, you know, even meditate and kind of be still for a moment and, and really kind of probe human experience in a way through this music. Um, and of course, the color of, of orchestral music um, is really exciting to me. Um, but classical music as a whole, you know, there's, of course, piano music and strings and winds and brass and percussion. And, and even nowadays, composers are using electronic instruments and all kinds of things. It just keeps evolving. So that's really exciting, too. It really is. I love classical music. And <clears throat> it's, excuse me, it's taken me a little while. Um, you know, growing up, I was never really exposed to it. But as an adult, I've learned to love mm -hmm. it. And and you say that classical music is for everyone, mm -hmm. but don't you feel that there's a little bit of a misconception surrounding it? What do you think the biggest misconception is about classical music? Yeah, I think sometimes people might think, oh, well, I have to know something yeah. to enjoy classical music, or um, well, maybe it's expensive, or you know, there might be other, or, mm -hmm. or maybe just somebody maybe might feel like, is that venue or that place? somewhere where I can feel comfortable yeah. and orchestra you know, music is yeah. that do I go to a symphony theater right. you know what what is right. this is this for me type thing right absolutely and so I mean that's a big thing intersection is trying to do is kind of break down those barriers yeah. by performing all over the community um, accessible ticket prices and just you know new music to have new experiences with this repertoire so you mentioned intersection just a minute ago mm -hmm. for for folks who may not be familiar with us talk and explain a little bit about what is intersection sure well we are a collective of musicians performing contemporary classical music. So by contemporary classical music, we mean, you know, music of the 21st and 20th century. I mean, music composed during our lives. Um, so it's really exciting, I think, because composers today are influenced by the world around us in which we live. So um, this repertoire, you know, might be informed by stuff happening, um, you know, in, in politics or mm -hmm. culture or um, but yet it's timeless too right you know there's still love and mm -hmm. all those wonderful things that come forward too um, so yeah intersection we do live performances we also have a program for kids um, encouraging them to write and create new music and then we also have some monthly partnerships we perform at room in the inn once a month and then also at kidsville once a month yeah. so partnerships are a big part of what we do too well I know you want to see uh, classical music uh, grow well into our future and that for more young people to be exposed mm -hmm. to it. Um, elaborate a little bit more on uh, is Contempo Kids. Mm -hmm. And I know you work with a well-known uh, music school here in Nashville, the W.O. Smith School. Um, in what way are you working to help uh, young people sort of have appreciation for classical music. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think, you know, obviously music education in and of itself is such an in incredible tool that we have to 
excite and stimulate young people you know I mean mm -hmm. it's just there's all kinds of great data <laughs> about True. kids staying in school oh, and just being engaged in the value of music education um, but specifically Contempo Kids is about music creation and writing new music you know a lot of times kids are performing music that may have been written by somebody else but we want kids to cultivate their own unique voice and bring that forward through the vehicle of music um, and obviously you know we're classical musicians yes. so we're gonna bring classical <laughs> instruments into that discussion and notation and you know Western kind of thoughts but we're not limiting it to that either you know we want kids to go in whatever music Avenue or exploration that that speaks to them and we're going to support them and invite them to go down that explorative path. So we've brought in all kinds of new tools and technology in our curriculum. We've designed a whole curriculum that we've created and we've piloted it at W.S. Smith and we're continuing to work with W.S. Smith every year to reach the kids there and then we have other programs in the community where kids can participate in Contempo Kids as well. I love that. Mm -hmm. If a parent, you know, um, is thinking how could I maybe get my child, you know, to love classical music, mm -hmm. how, how were you when you first uh, heard and started to love classical music and, 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 and what advice would you have for parents and how they may be able to help their children to, to learn a little bit more about it. Right, yeah, I mean I think exposure of course is really Absolutely. important and so you know the schools um, are a wonderful place for that but in our community there are so many wonderful ways in which we can experience classical music in our community and you know we were chatting even about how it just takes one performance yeah. or one person to make mm -hmm. a difference in your life you know I know for myself my dad was a police officer and my mom was a businesswoman and I didn't grow up listening to classical music in my house and yet here I am an orchestral yeah. conductor <laughs> um, and I think it was because when I was in, in school in high school really I came to it kind of late I had one music teacher who really opened up all this repertoire to me and um, taught me music theory and piano and all these things and it was just this cascading you know all this stuff that I didn't know about that was really exciting to me so it can just take one teacher mm -hmm. one person um, but you know sometimes going to a performance and hearing an orchestra for the first time or hearing an ensemble for the first time at intersection you know we want kids to feel very close to our musicians and you know be on the same level yeah. and you know be able to see the cello up close and and you know really feel like we're the same you know we're just having a different way of experiencing this music too together but we're together in this experience. So Intersection has been around for four years mm -hmm. now. Um, how did you come up with the idea for this? Is this something that's, you know, weighed on you for a while? Um, and then, then you came up with the name as well. Like, talk a little bit about how you came up with the name and just really how you wanted to sort of uh, further uh, classical music in the community. Right, sure. Well, I think sometimes when we think of classical music, we might think of Mozart or Tchaikovsky right. or Beethoven or, exactly. you know, people who are long dead. <laughs> and know? that was one of those misconceptions <laughs> right. that I was thinking about right. that some people have. Absolutely. And so I thought, you know, here we are in Nashville. It's Music City. And we really should have a professional ensemble dedicated to new music, contemporary classical music. So, you know, composers that are writing for strings and, you know, or, or you know, all kinds of instruments, all kinds of tools that are in front of them. Um, and then regarding the name intersection, this idea of a place where different things can come together and intersect or meet. Yes. Um, so it could be a composer that has different influences. Maybe it's their culture. Maybe it's, um, you know, teachers that influence them. But it could also be a dance company working with us or a film company working with us um, and yeah so just bringing yeah. different things together well I know you said all bringing all these different things together explain what an intersection concert might look like because it may not just be all musicians playing right <laughs> we like to say there are music experiences okay. <laughs> so by that you know really engaging different senses too we did a concert at the musicians hall of fame and museum where the audience got up and moved in the middle of the concert they heard half of it in one space and half of it in another <laughs> space you know and so really for us it's anything's yes. possible anything can happen at an intersection concert and so it really is kind of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to come and experience this repertoire in this setting with these partners in this location yes. you know really just pushing all of those boundaries and yeah. exploring together and folks can learn about where they will be able to come out to see an intersection con concert. You offer a newsletter. We do, yeah. And uh, tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So, you know, our website's intersectionmusic.org, and you can sign up for our newsletter list, and then you'll get monthly updates about our performances and the venues. All of our rehearsals are open to the public, too. We want people to come and hear this repertoire and experience okay. it. So we're all about 
breaking down any barrier we can for people. Well, where do you rehearse? All different places through okay. the community. So we've worked with um, Conexion Americas and Casa Azafran. Yes. Um, W.S. Smith has hosted our rehearsals. So we have a lot of really wonderful community partners that open their doors to us so that we can be here for the community. And all of that's on the newsletter. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, let's give that website one more time so our folks want to know uh, more about where they can sure. find you. So it's intersectionmusic.org. Fantastic. Kelly, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for I having me. I have grown to love classical music, and I did have some misconceptions uh, growing up mm -hmm. that it was probably not something that I would enjoy because I'm thinking of Mozart and some things like that. But I've learned to love Mozart and all of those types mm -hmm. of things. A lot of it is exposure. And thank you for exposing our community more to classical music. Thank you. And we're going to take a break, but when we come back, hear how one organization is trying to bring a little joy and normalcy into the lives of military personnel who've lost their lives while on active duty. 